the arrow struck true. Before it even hit its pillager target, however, Ranger Thawkins had unleashed another. He had told the group there were 16 pillagers, although Ferdinand had only seen maybe half that number. All six men were firing away, hidden in the relative safety at the edge of the clearing. Five or six pillagers already lay dead before the first return shot came. Ferdinand had missed his first shot, but connected with the next two. Cover! Thawkins had told them when he called for cover, they needed to immediately duck behind a tree without hesitation. Ferdinand ducked behind the large spruce he was using for cover, but two men the party had gained in Monument to the Fallen didn't move fast enough. Perhaps they had tried to unleash one last arrow before hiding, but both took a simultaneous arrow. No, wait, it wasn't an arrow, it was different. A bolt, maybe. Regardless, both fell to the ground, instantly dead. The vacant eyes of Hin and Okel looked unblinkingly at the sky. Stay down! They have an enchanted crossbow at the top of the tower! Though the roof of the pillager outpost was ablaze, it seemed as though not all the pillagers had abandoned it. Ferdinand crawled just a few yards away to get a look at the outpost. He saw, with a fiery backdrop, just one pillager holding an odd kind of bow. Maybe that is what Thawkins had called a crossbow? He would watch the pillager fire again. Three bolts flew simultaneously towards the ranger's tree. Three bolts! Thawkins spun up from his tree and fired two more bolts in rapid succession. Two more pillagers fell to the ground. Ferdinand stood and fired another pillager who had been heading towards Corley. Just as Ferdinand dove back to the ground, he saw the lone pillager with his shining crossbow appear again from the outpost roof, about to fire another trio of bolts. Peeping out from behind his tree, he could see the remaining pillagers retreating to the bottom floor of the outpost. With the sniper on top of the outpost with his enchanted crossbow, there would be no way to cross the clearing between the woodland and the enemy. Just as he appeared again with that damned crossbow, about to fire, Sage Recon appeared from the shadows behind, dagger in hand. Moving silently, the Sage slit the sniper's throat, dropping his body off the edge of the tower. With the sniper out of the way, the party made quick work of the remaining pillagers. After the battle was over, the four men gathered at the foot of the outpost. Corley, release the villagers and see their wounds. Ferdinand, retrieve our friends' bodies. We will return them to Monument of the Fallen. Ranger Thawkins glanced at Sage Recon. Let's go find your arrow. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the realm of Vast. And well, I am in the middle of some big projects. So as you probably know from the title of this episode, I would imagine this is going to be a Q&A episode. Uh, but before we get to that, I need to start with the comment of the day. Uh, new thing that we're doing, comment slash question of the day, whatever uh, you have. Um, so this is, uh, by the way, if you have a comment or a question of the day, to help me out, use hashtag HeyFix. It appears very nicely on my little app here so I can really seek them out and see them very quickly and uh, pick which one I wanna I want to discuss. So we're gonna start with it today. Uh, Realm Vast in episode 34. My dude, I am really enjoying your content. You have taught me some valuable lessons about building. Recently, I started doing texture variation and uh, I love it, I think is, I, I missed. Thanks for all the inspiration and keep it up. Ben Kitchen, uh, yes, Ben. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the kind words. I picked that comment because I want to talk about texture variation a little bit. Um, you know, that's, for me, that's what it all comes down to. What, I think when everyone starts building, they start without texture variation. Um, they start just building a really nice, clean, flat wall and all that kind of stuff. And then sort of the next level to building for interest sake is where you start to use texture variation. A real artist could talk more about this than I can, but you know, this game is all about like pixels, right? Like if you look at, at everything, you can see like within a block, there's texture variation, basically. This isn't all one color. It's not like flat colored blocks mod or something like that. There's there's a whole bunch of different slight variations of color. And that's what gives this this image uh, a look. And that's that's every image, right? So um, we can just see it really well in this. Well, if the way I look at texture variation um, is that you're kind of doing what's within a block on a bigger scale. So like, let's take a look at over here. Let's take a look at maybe Germ's um, Castle Gates because I think it's you can see it nicely. So what he did with here is some shading. So um, I think it's interesting that, that, that he did um, andesite 
here, uh, polished andesite, regular andesite, uh, polished andesite, stone brick, cobble up there. Uh, so you can see the, the various, so basically within, like with like there's, so there's a pixel here, but then within this big area is is kind of like the same thing as within one block. It's kind of the way I look at it, and you can see it shades up. So that that's that's you know blending. That's kind of like I think the next level from variation. So it starts with you start with a clean wall, then you go into texture erosion, then maybe you move towards shading up and and things like that. That's something Whip does a lot um, in, in his building, and I've been really checking out and and, and uh, learning from. So. Uh, yeah, that's the comment of the day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in, uh, the library whenever we build one. We gotta build a library, I guess. So, um, we'll get there eventually. But, today, basically, uh, I am start- I am in the middle of two enormous projects. And before we get to that, let me show you what the two enormous projects are. Um, it's such a nice house. So, the two- the two enormous projects, they're both, um, they're both patron builds. Uh, I, I have actually a whole bunch of things to show you here, and we'll talk about that between sort of the Q&A portion of this. But um, one is uh, for for uh, Truth. I'm working on the gold tier Truth uh, thing, which is going to be basically a portal underneath that house. And, but I got a lot of digging to do. I started doing the digging. I'm going to go over here and show you where it is. But then also, in addition to that, I also have, uh, and I've been working, I worked late into the night on that digging part last night. And uh, Callus gave me some, and I did a live stream yesterday. That they did a bunch of the digging. Um... So that's what I've been working on first. Late in the night, I started actually doing what, what the portal is going to show. Uh, the other thing I, I, I got to do is I got to dig out another place, although a smaller kind of crater looking thing for a patron build for Dove. Those things are huge and take a lot of time. Here's what we did basically in the live stream is we did this hole, I, I think, for the most part of it. And I did some of this last night. But then the big thing I started was over here. I started digging this out. So I, I dug out the perimeter. Of this, and this is going to be what the portal is going to show uh, on the inside of this. So I dug out the perimeter. Then what I'll do is I'll go up some amount of blocks and dig another one, and then just dig down to this level. I think that's going to be the easiest way to go. But that um, that that diorite uh, pole, that's the middle, and it goes 50 blocks in every direction. So I think that's going to be a good one for this. This is my first one I'm going to do, and this is going to be the Vastin Dimensions portal. So this is going to be sort of what connects Realm of Vastin and Vastin Dimensions. So uh, I don't know if this is going to be bigger than the others. Probably I think. So maybe it, it a lot. It just depends. A lot of it just depends on 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 the first one. We'll learn a lot from the doing the very first one. So I got to keep on digging this. This is not even all of it actually. This needs to go out to there. But let me show you that. Um, yeah. So all of this platform needs to be dug also down as low as that, and down to there. You probably can't see. It's it's very dark for me. It's probably unbelievably dark for you two. But um, here, if you can kind of. Uh, you can kind of see with some light, I think, how just massive this is. But I like it being dark, and I'm I'm glad about it because that's going to make things um, really nice and and creepy. And I might not have to detail quite as much as I thought because it is very dark. <laughs> so uh, that's a good thing. That's a good detailing less is probably is probably a good thing for me. That's the first thing I've been working on. Now, while we travel over to uh, the next little area, let's get into the Q&A. So I ask on Discord, I ask for questions. And um, I just, well, it was during my live stream where I, I told, I, I just told whoever, people who were on, I had like 21 people just in the middle of the day with no warning, just, just coming to check it out, which was really cool. But, um, so I asked, I said, Hey, if you have questions, I have a channel on my discord questions for fix, just drop in questions. And I got a lot of questions that we can address. So I thought it would be kind of fun to just sort of do that and just talk about this. So from, uh, it's Atheros asked, um, here, I'm gonna have to stop and read. Okay. Hold on a second. Um, uh, what big plans or visions do you have for Realm of Aston and VD in the future? Not just the ones you've already talked about. Um, and second part, let's uh, hope it never happens. If any of the worlds get corrupted and, and you don't have a backup, um, do you have a plan in case that happens? What would be the course of action you take? So let's start with that. Now, I take backups pretty regularly, and I host Vastin on a server, uh, same, both Vastin Dimensions and Vastin. So I have pretty easily roll back abilities where I don't even need to get backups, um, although I do it anyway. So I kind of have a few levels, but you know, it's a game and it's a game that's always being developed. So something could happen. Absolutely. You know, let's stop and get some fireworks. Absolutely. Something should happen. So if something were to happen where I just say, say I would have to roll back really far. Like, I, like, I don't know. I don't even know. Like lose. Even if I lost all of season three, I think I would just we would just start a new kingdom and just you know take the season two back up. But let's say we couldn't even do that. 
uh, let's say for some reason we had to sleep, we had to eliminate it and just basically start over. I think I would do Vastin again, but probably maybe do it in um, in uh, Windows 10 or PE edition. Reason being, it, I know it's not as good, but it would be really nice to be able to log on from my phone. Uh, I think that's and, and, and probably just use like the the little taste of germ uh, texture pack, you know. Um, you know, because I, I I have some regrets. I wish we didn't. I wish we didn't have our own custom texture pack in in some ways. I wish we could just use a uh, little taste of germ because I know that'd be easier on my buddy. You know, uh, I feel I I really feel guilty and feel bad that how much extra time he has to take out of his life. I mean, I know he I know look I know germ loves doing it. But just to give us sort of our own version of his texture pack, I wish we could just use his. But you know, we're so we're so committed to so many of the blocks and things. I it would just it would really break a lot of the stuff that we have here and make it look really rough, you know. Um, so that's probably what I would do. I'd probably I'd probably start a new a new realm of Aston on a on probably like a realm. I'd probably just do a realm on PE. Um, uh, that way you can just very, it's very user friendly. You can just really connect. We rarely, almost never, essentially never have more than 10 people on. So I don't think that'd be a problem, but yeah, that's probably what I would do. Now, the other part is what big plans do I have for vast? And I need to go to the library. Oh, there's a path now. I forgot. Uh, not library, uh, Explorers Guild. So big plans, you know, I, I don't have, I think we've kind of, I, I hate to say we've kind of reached the plans, but we've kind of reached the plans that I have right now. I want to do some some group things. I want to do a, a, a UHC coming up very soon. I want to do a, some some build time-lapse sessions, which are going to be coming up. Uh, those are going to be special things. But as far as what we're doing, I think what we're doing, I just want to continue. You know, I want to continue building here. I want to continue Vast and Dimensions, uh, sort of uh, take, doing a new, a new take on a world every single episode. Uh, or season rather, <laughs> that would be weird. Uh, every single season, just do a new, basically a new dimension. You know, um, I, I'd like to. That's in dimensions. I'd like to have fewer teams, but bigger teams, so we can do bigger projects. Not that the projects aren't big, but um, bigger projects with more people together instead of splintering off into six or seven different build teams. So I think we'll probably do that in dimensions with three build teams. Um, here, I think we, I feel like we've kind of reached the sweet spot here. I, you know, I might like to add maybe two to four more people in Realm of Aston, um, over the next, uh, next several months or this season. Um, just, you know, uh, um, to, to just help continue to evolve this thing so we can build, I don't want to say faster, but maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, I did all this. I don't know if I've shown this on camera. I can't actually remember, but I uh, decided this was going to be an open air library of sorts, kind of like a planning session for the Builders Guild or Explorers Guild, where they would sit here and it's like, hey, we should go explore East or, you know, sit over here and it's like, hey, how about that time we explored to San Rascu? That was cool. Things like that. Um, I think it's kind of cool. And then up there is the era of Thalea, which I know I showed on a video. I think maybe it was a live stream, but let's go up and take a look at that. So up here in the Explorer's Guild, every Explorer's Guild has its own artifact. And this is the one where I think in today's episode, basically Ranger Thawkins and Sage Recon, they tracked it down. So this is the arrow of Thalea, and uh, it always points to the tree. It's kind of a magical artifact. So e each Explorer's Guild is going to have its own sort of prized artifact, and that is theirs. Also up in the top of every Explorer's Guild is a map of the of the area. And I think that's a nice little touch and a nice way to, a nice place to have a map is up on this big glass pyramid sort of situation. And yeah, here's what we have so far. I got really, I got really tired of doing the map after I did this much of it. So eventually we'll fill out the map or maybe someone else feels so inspired. So yeah, I've been working on the Explorers Guild kind of off camera. Um, that's been kind of fun. And uh, yeah, a lot more to go on that. But let me show you what else we've been doing. And we will hit another... Another uh, uh, comment. Remember, if you have a, a comment or question of the day, it's hashtag HeyFix. Um, okay. What is your biggest achievement on YouTube um, from uh, Caravel? Uh, oh, uh, uh, Lombar. Lombarqui. Lombarqui. Uh, Lombarqui. I don't know. Uh, you come to all my streams. I don't want to say your name. That's shameful. Um, uh, biggest achievement for sure uh, was when uh, Wells Knight saw my world and just spoke so incredibly highly of it. it, it like, is that YouTube or is that just world building? I don't know which one you want to think of it as, but um, to have someone who's seen, who's been around for a long time and seen a lot of things, speak so highly of 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 this world and show it to a lot of people, uh, that was uh, that was super cool. Um, I don't, I'm not a big numbers guy, although I'd lie if I didn't say I I, I don't look at it sometimes, but um, uh, that's not really what I'm in it for. Um, you know, I'm in it to 
to do this world and show the evolution of this world. Okay, so Brian the Girl has a question that says, would it make sense to build a frost druid fortress outside of Soleil that is perhaps in the process of being constructed or an assault from the nether? Um, uh, would you ever consider doing a, a modded, lightly modded server in connection with Vastin? Okay, let's talk about those two things. Um, uh, enabled by the Planeswalker connection uh, concept of VD server. I don't see doing a, a, a modded server in this way. I have thought about doing a season of VD with, with a very, very small mod pack. But, you know, the heart of Vassin is doing a vanilla thing. You know what I mean? It's it's pushing vanilla as hard as we go. That's why on Realm of Vassin, we don't use Spygot or anything like that. We run straight vanilla, uh, no plugins, even though it'd be really nice to have that mapping plugin and stuff like that. I would love to have that, but I want to push um, as hard as I can on vanilla and see how far we can kind of take it. That's why with the resource pack and the sounds and command blocks and all that kind of stuff. So that's always been kind of the point. So I think I think by doing that, by doing like a lightly modded series, I think it would kind of leave that. Now, I'm not saying that if if the channel doesn't continue to grow, there might not be a modded series on the channel, but I think if I did it, I would almost feel like I'd want to do something different than Vastin on that, just to give myself a little bit of a mental break. You know what I mean? Um, there is more to show you here in, in town. That I'm just taking a break so I can hit some questions. Uh, Edgy says, what made me shave my head? I, I I know I was on a gig. I told this on a live stream, but I was on a gig and there was these huge like stadium uh, screens. I'm a musician in case you don't know, um, like stadium jumbotron that was showing the band. And during sound check, I, I turned around from the cameras and I was looking up at the jumbotron. I could see, I, so I had to look kind of up. I could see that I have a big big bald spot starting to form on the top of my head and that is just unacceptable for me so i decided that it's time to just get rid of it and uh call it a day on having hair <laughs> that's pretty much it okay um let me see here uh okay uh ferrix asks um have you ever uh, thought of coming up with a creation story for vastin's lore I feel so overwhelmed by these beautiful builds while my own builds are extremely plain and lack creativity. What advice can you uh, uh, give to help someone take their builds a step further? Okay. Um, okay, first. Uh, a creation sort of Vassin's War. I haven't. I haven't really. I haven't really. Because I feel like that would be kind of... You know, like in the real world, there's a whole bunch of different creation stories. You know, um, uh, there's a whole bunch of different religions that sort of have their own, oh, this is new, have their own sort of um, uh, story and, and their own their own uh, gods and their own all that stuff. Um, I, I would kind of like that. So if I did a creation story for Vastin, it wouldn't be definitive. I would say, oh, the Church of the End believes this. Oh, the Order of Man believes this. You know what I mean? I think that that'd be a lot juicier and allow for a lot more stuff. That's a new house for you, I think. Unless you watch the live stream, I think. Uh, I built that. I was going to do an episode of building that house, but honestly, I didn't feel it's very good. Uh, it's kind of weird. I, I, I like the weird aspect of it, but I just don't feel like I pulled it off, so I just dumped the episode. Um, it's okay. I'm not going to take it down because it's okay enough. It's just not as good as what I had hoped, um, honestly. So I, I just I kind of wanted it to be a little bit better than that. Uh couple things I like like I like the idea of these windows with the trap doors and stuff like that I, to do that you have to use the debug stick to get these to connect to trap doors but um it's okay it's all right I think it's an interesting house but that brings me to the second part of that question so um I feel overwhelmed uh by the beautiful builds right my extreme my, my own builds are extremely plain and lack creativity so get out of your comfort zone right so so that I mean that, that's the thing get out of your comfort zone so if you're laying out your house most people lay out a house like this I, most people that's that's too harsh but you know a lot of people lay out their house like that like boom there's a house then as you get better then you say okay well now I'm gonna build a house that's like like this right um cool okay that that that's that's one thing that's a good start now the next thing to do is force yourself do okay now I'm gonna do a house like this right um, there, like that. Now, that house is weird, and that forces creativity on you. So I did a random layout, totally random, and that's how I do all my houses now. I did a really random layout, and then what happens is then you build arches. Of course I don't have anything. You know what I'm going to do just to show this very quickly? I'm just going to pop do creative here. Um, let me just grab a block that's that's anything uh, that I'll know to throw away. Okay, so, so, okay. So if you do this, right? then you would have to do, maybe then you do a peak here, like that, right? Okay, so there's a peak. But then over here, maybe you're gonna do, um, 
Here you might do, uh, let's do a second floor. Oops, a second floor. And then a peak, right? So that's going to be higher roof. So then you got to connect these roofs. Then over here, let's do this. Um, and oh, there's an even number, right? So that makes things a little bit different. So we'll connect those. And then this one, maybe we'll just do this one just be like flat come the whole way across here, right? So that's going to force creativity. So then when you're coming, when you're building your roof around, you have to kind of do something along these lines, right? There you go. So there's your roof peak, um, which is why one of the things it's nice to use full blocks because stairs would make that a little bit more difficult. So full blocks and slabs are the way to go. So that's my little tip. If you want to break out of your comfort zone for building a house, build weird shapes and then force yourself to, uh, to make it work, right? Um, that's something I've been working on a lot in my own building. And as you've seen the last, uh, well, basically this whole season, you know, in some of the last season, um, it really, it really does. Uh, it really does help. If you force yourself out of your zone, your comfort zone, then you're forced to be creative. And that's a really good thing, right? So let's go sleep. Oh, um, I don't want to be a big cheater pants. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Here's what, here we go. Uh, okay. It's Athros ask, uh, what do you what do you do when you found yourself in a creative block a creative blockade or however it's called how do you get over it and i don't mean from where do you draw your inspiration well see i think you eliminated the answer to the question um i think that finding inspiration is how i get over it so um you know watching someone else's videos some builder who i really respect like uh you know i mean People who play here, you know, people who play Callus, Germ, Sausage, uh, Grumpy, uh, any of those people, and not even just Minecraft, you know. Um, I was watching a Grumpy Stone Hearth video, and I saw some builds that I thought would be really, really cool here, right? So um, you can draw inspiration from 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 anywhere, uh, and I think that is how you get over it. The other thing is sometimes you just need to put down blocks. You know, I, 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 I'm a trumpet, I'm a trumpet player professionally, and, I, and I, I teach trumpet lessons, and sometimes people are like, I don't know what to do. Well, just do something. Sometimes you just need to do something like put down blocks and then see where it leaves you. You know, that's a big thing, right? So a lot of times I, I don't feel inspired. Like for example, that house, I didn't have a real good vision for that house. So I just started putting down blocks. Do I love it? No, I do not love it, but it's okay. It's all right. And I learned some things from it. Some things I do like. So let me again, uh, go up here so I can show you see the roof. Um, I wouldn't do a roof like that again, but I might do a roof similar because there are some aspects of that that I really like, right? And that's part of the learning process and part of staying inspired. Um, I think probably, you know, probably what I would do, and I may even still change this out, is I would probably continue these sort of spruce bars going up, maybe via trap door. Um, the side of this, I don't, is this done? Yeah, I guess it is done. Actually, I don't hate this house as much as I thought I did. I think it just needs some some more variation on the outside. If I think if I added some some uh, maybe some variation to the white terracotta too, add in some bone block or something, I think I would like it more. But man, yeah, looking at it, I kind of don't hate it that much. I really like this little this little thing too. And again, that didn't used to be there. I just I realized it looked plain, so I just made a landing. And so that I mean, I, does that help? I don't know if that helps or not, but. You know, sometimes you're not inspired. Sometimes you need to just put down a block and then another block and then another block. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you have a whole bunch of blocks put down, you know, and that's kind of how you, that's kind of how you do it, you know? Uh, so there is that. Okay. Brian the girl says, uh, are you introduced more species uh, of magic like elves and dwarves into Vastin that have disappeared before or because of the nether war? Uh, are you going to challenge yourself to do more interiors in the future? Probably not. Probably not. I mean, it would be a challenge, but it'd be a challenge not creative, creatively. It'd be more of a challenge because I just don't really enjoy it, you know? Um, and it's really pulling, it's really like pulling teeth. Uh, I know a lot of people love it. I know a lot of people wish that all buildings had interiors. I, I wish all buildings had interiors. I just don't want to do it, you know? Uh, so probably not, you know, I, I, in the end, we're still playing a game. And if it's something you don't really don't enjoy doing, well then, you know. Uh, but are you introduced more species of magic? Absolutely, possibly. It depends where the story takes us. Um, as of now, we've sort of established that only humans live in this world now, that all other species have moved on. If the storyline takes us somewhere, like if next season we decide to do a dwarven underground fortress, which is absolutely a possibility, then, then, then all of a sudden we have dwarves, you know, um, I'm not, I don't make decisions in this world. I, I, I might present um, decisions to be made by the group, but we all make the, make it, make the decisions sort of together, you know? Um, I know that I have something else to show you. I guess just these houses, I guess. I, I, I really feel like there's more, but I don't know what it is. Okay. 
let me see what else. There, I got a whole bunch of questions. Thank you guys so much for, for the questions. Netlock says several times, how do you not run out of things to talk about? Uh, I, I just, I don't. I don't. There's always stuff to talk about. Um, I think that there's some sort of ego thing involved, to be honest. I think that something like, like if your ego is such that, that you believe that everything you say is interesting, then you would believe that everything, that everyone else would find everything you say to be interesting. So, uh, yeah, you know, that's probably part of it is I, I it's probably my ego is out of control. <laughs> uh, old gray man asks, what's the next piece of hardware you plan on getting? Eventually I want to do, eventually I want to do a, uh, I want to build a new computer, but you know, with, with finances the way they are right now and all that stuff, that's, that's probably a long way off. But, um, yeah, eventually I want to build I want to build a PC. My, the PC I have now, I bought about three years ago and I bought it sort of as a gaming, uh, it was, it's a gaming PC, but it was, you know, it was like on Amazon and, and already pre-built. I don't know how to do that stuff. So I'd have to learn, I'd have to really learn how to do it. Um, uh, but yeah, that's probably the next, next thing I want to do is build one. Uh, shoe size, Chef Boy RD ass, um, is, uh, between 10 and a half and 11, depends on the shoe. Okay. What is your favorite town city hamlet you have built in the realm of Vastin? Okay. Uh, uh, Lambarqui, Lambarqui, please tell me how to pronounce your name. I, I feel really bad that I don't know how to say it. Uh, it's always the most recent town. It's always the most recent one. Like, in fact, I would even take it to the micro level of the, oh, you know, here's something I got to work on. I, I want to add more dirt. The reason why I want to add dirt is because I don't want to add stone block to this and I want to have carpet so I can hide lighting. So, so the snow will stay off of it. Um, and I don't want to use a million billion string, you know? Uh, yeah, it's even, it's the most recent part of the most recent town I've built. Like when I was building the shipyard, this was my favorite part. When I was building the, uh, Explorers Guild, that was my favorite part. It, it's, it's whatever I'm most inspired by whatever's newest, um, uh, I mean, before this, my favorite part was White Sands. Before that, my favorite part was Port Bray. You know what I mean? It's, it's always that. There are a few hamlets that I'm, I'm kind of proud of, but but for the most part, I don't pour my heart into that. And I really get off on the multiplayer part. You know, I just, I love, I love just seeing what other people are building around and, and that kind of stuff. And, and hamlets generally, I kind of do by myself. Uh, this most recent one with Mantis is sort of the exception to that rule. So uh, yeah, so I don't love them quite as much just because it's, it's just me, you know? Uh, let's see, where are we at for time? I want to make sure that I'm not going crazy over. Okay, maybe one more question. Um, let me see here. Uh, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Oh, okay. Uh, Jason says, what is your least favorite thing about Bastin? Maybe dealing with server stuff or the grind? Um, you know... I'll tell you the part that I, I, I have, a, I love it. And I don't even want to say it's love hate because there's no hate, but there's love. And sometimes it can be a chore, but the writing of the lore bits for me, um, because writing doesn't come as naturally for me as other, uh, other things. Like when I watch other people's YouTube let's plays, I get really jealous sometimes, uh, because I get really jealous that, um, that they can just sort of hit record and go. <laughs> I mean, not saying there's not off off camera grind because there certainly is, but uh, I get really jealous that that like um, you know that they that that I can't that I have to sort of pour the time into the the lore bit and writing and that writing thing. It just takes me a long time. I'm just really slow at it. So I, yeah, I wish that. So, sometimes I wish I could I could not do it, but I think I've kind of locked into a style and and people like it. Like when I ask, why do you come to Bastin? Um, I didn't list lore as a reason and I got more write-in votes for lore than I got votes for like anything else really. So, um, you know, I, and I love it. And I think that's what set, sets it apart. But, but sometimes it can be a chore just because writing is uh, not crazy easy for me you know um that i i enjoy it when it's like done and i enjoy coming up with the ideas but sitting down and writing the script because i can't talk i can't talk off the top of my head for a script or it sounds like this and it's just not effective so it has to be written out um and that just takes a long time it just takes me it takes me longer to do that than than to, than to do an episode to be honest uh uh, I, I wish it wasn't, I wish it wasn't that way and maybe I'll get better. I am getting better with time, but it's still, it's still taking a long time, you know? Um, okay, quickly, I'm going to get through the, the I, I think I got every question. Uh, Ponk, uh, Pons, Ponks, Ponks says, how, uh, where do you get inspiration to build everything? Uh, just watching, watching YouTube videos, playing, uh, Witcher recently has been something, uh, I've just been around this game for so long, watching so many let's plays that it's just. 
my list of things to build is a zillion miles long. It's much, much longer than my list of things that I have built. You know what I mean? So there's, we're not running out of things to build for sure. Uh, it's actually really helped having patrons as well. Cause I, I need to do patron builds and, um, that's helped because it's like, well, okay, I need to build a house. I need to build a floating island for Dove. I need to build this underground thing for you. I need to do this special thing that Cylon Craft and I are going to work on, um, a sort of statue thing. Uh, you know, those things really actually help a lot uh, to come up with inspiration because you have to, so it helps. It's, it's very helpful. And the last question I have, I think I got all of them, is X Paradox. How did you discover Minecraft? What drew you in and how do you, or what kept you playing for so long? Um... I discovered Minecraft because I used to sit on the couch uh, with my wife when we were dating and watch these really horrible TV shows. And so I needed a game that I could just play on like a tablet. So I downloaded Minecraft uh, uh, PE. Well, I think it was PE back then. Um, you know, and, and I played it there and thought, well, maybe I should just try the desktop and I got sucked in. Why do I keep coming back? That's the question is because this is the most creative game I've ever seen in my life. Um, where it's all about, as you know, it's all about world building and building up a huge thing. And that has always been my thing. Like when I played Legos when I was a kid, I always set up these big like battles with Legos and GI Joes and Transformers and everything, but I never actually fought them. I was really about the world building. And even back when I was, you know, eight years old, I was about setting up the world and creating the storyline for the battle and all that stuff, but then not actually doing it where my friends would come in and they'd smash the toys together. Like, ah, you know, but I was like, oh, wait, you're messing up my, you're messing up my world that I built, you know, and here I am. Uh, more than three decades later, still doing basically the exact same thing, but uh, with this beautiful digital thing. So I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, I have a lot of editing to do on that on the the, the cinematic that I did. I'm going to try to try. To, uh, it's a first person fight cinematic, as you saw already, but I'm not sure how I'm going to edit that. So hopefully it turns out okay. Uh, love you guys so much. Thank you. I'm sorry for the, just the Q and A episode. I, I have a lot of building, but I just the grind is the grind is for real that I need to do over the next couple of days so I can do an episode for Thursday. So again, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Realm of Vast episodes. Other days, other stuff when I can get to it. And uh, please join my Discord. Subscribe to my friends. Let me know if you have a question or a comment of the day. We don't usually do a whole episode of comments, but if you have just one, uh, hashtag HeyFix. That helps me find it easier. It's a lot easier to find, honestly. And uh, and we'll try to do one of those every episode uh, by popular demand. Okay. Love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next episode from the Realm of Vast. And bye, everyone.